Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. This is, uh, we're, moving, we're going to talk about vision this morning. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's just run over to Habakkuk verses 1 through 3. I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon the tower. And watch, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he that may run that readeth it. For the vision, the vision, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not tarry, and, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it; it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, how many have ever read that and gotten confused? It will not tarry, but wait for it. It, 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 it you know. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it won't tarry. Well, the reason is there's two different Hebrew words there for tarry. One means to tarry or to wait or to, to delay, but the other means to hold back with no hope. Okay? The second word tarry comes from a Hebrew word that means to keep back or to hold back with no hope. So in other words, God's not going to withhold the fulfillment of the vision from you. Okay, though it's, though it's taking longer to get here than you anticipated, though it looks like it's tearing low, though it looks like it's not coming to pass, it will come to pass. He said it will speak, it will come to pass. And it will not be kept back from you. That's what that second word tearing means. Okay, does that help? Because I used to read that and go, though it tarry, wait for it, it will not tarry. Well, which is it? Is it not going to tarry or is it going to tarry? But this is because of the two different words there and the two different meanings. Um, God's not going to keep it back from you. That's the second one. That second Terry comes from the Hebrew word meaning he's not going to keep it or withhold it from you with no hope. We have hope. Amen? Okay. Y'all here with me? I know some of y'all are digesting right now. Okay? Um, when God told Abraham to get out of his country, out of his kindred from his father's house, he had it, he had it made. He had a place to live. He had a residence. He had a family. Things were good financially. And God says, leave it all behind. I'm going to make you, make you a, um, a nomad. You're going to go out here and wander around until I show you where to go. Now, does that make sense? Did anybody, does anybody want to do that? No. But the walk of faith is a walk where when God leads us, and I, listen, I know the guy's making us leave, but quite frankly, I'm about to point at this, from looking at this and analyzing it, that God's used him to move us. Okay? He thinks he's just being a business guy. He thinks he doesn't like us, and so he's doing it and all kinds of things. They don't have a tenant to take our place and all that kind of We can whine and, and, and bawl about that, but I don't have enough cheese to go around, so... A little wine, a little cheese with your wine. Okay, there you go. Crackers. Okay. Um, we can look at it this way. We can, we can, you know, you know, uh, you know, he's a jerk. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. You know, and you know. But let me say this: sometimes God uses people or uses circumstances to move you. And I believe we're being moved. Where are we going? He will show us. I have so much confidence in my God. He will show us. And we might have a transitional period where we don't really have, we're, 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 anybody got, does anybody have a problem if we go to a movie theater that they rent to churches on Sunday mornings? Raise your, I mean, any, now if you do, we'll, 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 we'll just kick that one out as one of the ideas. Some of the theaters rent on Sunday mornings. You just come in there, plug your equipment into their sound system, and you got, you got church. No chairs, nothing. There are community centers. There are, there are high schools. We got some people going to check on high schools next week. They were all closed. GTCC um, places. We don't know how much that stuff costs. Okay? We don't, we don't know if there's a place we can go month to month that's, che that's, that's, that's cheaper, that's smaller, maybe smaller for a season. That's okay. We can contract to expand. But I know this. God, God did not get surprised by the letter I got. Okay? He... Yeah, our lease ran out in August. The end of August, our lease ran out. We've been on a month to month here since then. So he could have made us leave September. We weren't ready to move September. I believe a good majority of you are at a point now you can handle the move uh, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, and physically. We can do it. We can do it. 
But I believe God has another place for us that's better. That he's moving us into that direction so that we can grow. Now, now I've told people this. When we first moved over here, we were down on Lee Street. If you ever go down um, High Point Road, then it becomes, it used, it's now it's Gate City Boulevard. But right there at the Random One Road overpass, there's a white, well, it's not white anymore, it's been painted. But back behind it was a, is a brown warehouse. We were in that warehouse when we took the church in Greensboro. Gwen remembers. Hallelujah. If, if anybody in here, Gwen's the, uh, Gwen's the only one in my family that's in here right now that, was, that knew about that building. And then a year later, we moved over here. Okay? And uh, we came over here. This was a really growing area. They built the Kmart Superstore uh, super shopping center over here. There was a Winn-Dixie. All those units were filled up. Holden Road went across 220 over to Randomen or something, and it was a thoroughfare. People just used this road. Since then, Kmart went out of business over there. Winn-Dixie went out of business. There's only like two stores in, over there in those units. Um, the Holden Road was cut off because they widened it and made it Interstate 73. So they just tore down the bridge and you cold sacked it down there somewhere. You can't, it's not a thoroughfare anymore. Oh, you can go around? A back way, but it's, it's not like it used to be. They changed it. It used to be a, 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 like a main thoroughfare. They've done something different down there where people don't travel this way. This is a dead area as far as traffic. Plus, we're stuck back over in the business park. Okay? Um, other churches have moved in closer to us that are, that are on the main thoroughfares, that kind of stuff. We've known for some time we need to move. Just nobody was willing to do it. <laughs> we, when we started looking around going, I don't want to move. <laughs> Dear Lord, Janie's office alone was enough to keep me from moving. <laughs> She's over there next door. She can't hear me, but I'm, I'm the 57 boxes. What was that? Melanie, you just don't have no support for your pastor. She's, got, she's walking out for the first lady. She's going to make sure the first lady is taken care of. Throw the pastor under the bus if you have to, but the first lady is taken care of. She threw, it over, me, she threw me under the bus on Wednesday and parked on me. That's why, I think that's why my back's bombing. Anyway, I know we come from all areas of, the, of, of around here. We got people come from Archdale, Thomasville. People coming from Liberty, people coming from in Greensboro, people coming from, you know, um, Summerfield, out in Davidson County. We're coming from all over the place to church. For some of you, where we end up will be closer. For some of you, it'll be a little bit further. But we're called to Greensboro. And we need you to continue to support the ministry as God transitions us into another place. I'm asking you to follow me as we follow the Lord into this new place. To stay with us. You know, not go, well, I don't like that area they moved to. Or I can, I can just about guarantee you the next place is going to be, an, it's going to be a continuation of the transition. Okay? Uh, just until we can get into, you know, we're, we're, and, and, and in that, in this transition, um, we are considering ourselves, we're going to be a church um, launch team. Now, the new, the new term is people come into a town, they get a launch team. It's just about a bunch of Bible study people who are going to start a church. But they call it launch team. And they set a date. They're going to launch. And they all, you know, uh, one church came in here and, put, put, and went to the uh, Four Seasons Theater. 400 people their first Sunday. Now, listen, we, if they can come in here and we know we're called here. And we got the Holy Ghost. And we got the Word of God. We got the move of the Spirit that people have need of. If they can come in here and get 400 people, we can go somewhere and get 400, 500 people and get things done for Jesus. Amen? All right? But I, I believe in this, we had, to, we had to be able to get out of here for God to move us where he wants to take us. We kept thinking, I mean, our thinking was this, that we're going we're gonna to get 200 people, 300 people in here, and we're going to go find a building. That's what we thought. It's obviously not the way God's going to do it. That's what we thought. And so we just kind of settled on that. Probably should have asked the Lord. But you know what? Sometimes we just get busy doing things and, and, and walking things and just living, way, living, living in a certain pattern and um, don't really stop and take time to ask the Lord. So now that he's kicked us out, <laughs> Lord, where are you going to take us? All right? 
And that's okay. We're not all perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Dear Lord, I'm not perfect. But we have a vision. And I say our vision doesn't change. Our purpose to reach people and our purpose to train ministers and our purpose to start churches and our purpose to take the anointing and the word of God and, and touch this city and touch the Piedmont Triad and do the things God called us to do has not changed. We're transitioning out of this place. This is a building. It's not the church. Now, we went and looked at one area in town and, 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 and really stirred me and it stirred me big time because um, we got people looking for churches or places and and um, uh, since, we, since we announced it, we, there, I, I've been getting emails and places and text messages about this building and that building. So we went over to Westgate Center off of Wendover. Now that little area back there in Pomona and Westgate is about a 500-yard about a by 400-yard area of business parks. In this little squabby area, there were 17 storefront churches. One of the business parks has 11 Storefront churches in it. And I, all I could think was, what are we doing? What is our purpose? Are we just trying to meet so we can say we have a place? And I'm telling you every day. One place now, not on that business part, but on the other side down Norwalk, we went and looked at a building, and it was the something of faith ministries. And then, then, then they had a sign right in front of the building that said, Home of the Prophet. There were squirrels running all over the parking lot, getting nuts everywhere. I thought, Lord, what, what is it that we are called to do that we're not just another of the 17 just trying to have a place to meet? But God raised us up. And God called us here by the Holy Ghost. And God sent us here. And we have stood and stood and stood against storms, against the, the attacks, against everything you can think of. And now it looks like it might be the worst thing in the world. We got kicked out. Ah, oh, no. God's moving us, praise God. In the spring of 1988, we were in that building downtown on Lee, on Lee Street. <clears throat> And, and we were having a meeting, and, and, and the, I had a, Brother, Brother Hagin used to say, had a mini vision. Mini vision. M I N I. Mini. Well, in that vision, I saw the call of God for our ministry. See, I saw Greensboro, and over top of Greensboro was a dark cloud, just dark cloud. No light was getting through. And I looked up at the cloud, and as I looked up at the cloud, I went up to the cloud. When I got up, there was demon spirits, all arm in arm, so compacted together that, that no light could come through. And as I was standing there, a shaft of light came up out of the earth and went through the cloud. And when it did, the, 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 the cloud of demon spirits rolled back. And when it did, Jesus came through there. And he came and stood on the earth. And I said, Lord, what was that? He said, that, was the, that shaft of light was the prayers of the saints. And he reached down and picked up, really, Greensboro, the Piedmont Triad, and held it up toward heaven. Of course, the clouds are rolling back because Jesus came through. And the only way I can describe this is a genie lamp. You ever seen a genie lamp, you know? It tipped over out of heaven, and liquid drops of light fell and hit on, 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 on this area that Jesus was holding up. And immediately, I came down to the earth and saw a square building. It looked like an industrial square building. It had revolving doors on each side. And as far as you could see in each direction, in each revolving door, were people who were dark. Now, I'm not talking about skin tone. I'm talking about spiritually dark. There was no light in them. But they went through the... And, and, and I knew this was our church. This building was our church. Now, not... It was symbolic. It was, didn't mean our buildings would be square with revolving doors. It was symbolism. And they went through the revolving door, and when they came back out, they were full of light. And then the Spirit of God spoke to me and said this, there will be a revival that will start here that will spread up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States of America. Well, Greensboro is called the Gate City. Now, it was called the Gate City because it was the railroad to the west. It's going to be the Gate City for the Spirit, for a revival that spreads up and down the entire eastern seaboard. God showed me this in 1988. That's 27 years ago. This, well, actually 20, 28 years ago this spring, March. This is the vision that God showed me. It's been 28 years. This is the vision that God showed me. 
But it's been 28 years. God spoke to Abram in, 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 when he was 75. And 25 years later, it came to pass. Some people left our church because they got tired of waiting for the vision. They got frustrated. One person actually said this, and, and, and I'm not saying this to mock them or to make fun of them, but I'm showing what happens when we don't do what the Word says. They said if one more person comes in here and says, you're about to turn a corner, and, and God, what God has for you is going to come to pass, I'll, I'm just going to puke. This is a church leader at the time. I'm going to just gag and throw up, going to puke. Well, see, when you lose hope, when you lose sight, when you don't wait for it, when you don't stay connected to what God said, you can get wearied. I said, you can get wearied. When I got born again in, in July of 1979, within the first few days after that, something in my spirit said, you're going to the Orient to preach. I'm not going to use my notes. Just forget my notes. Do y'all mind if I just don't use my notes? This is important. This is a, for, this is, I'm laying out for you this year. We are transitioning into something better. It's going to be painful, maybe, or inconvenient, yes, not to have this building to drive up to, walk in, everything's already set up. It's going to be inconvenient. But inconvenience to walk into where God has for us and the fullness of what God has for us will be nothing when it's over. Are you all here? 1979, I got born again, July the 11th, 1979. Four days later, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking out of the tongues. Hallelujah. One week after that, my wife got, actually one week after I got saved, she came to church, got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, all at the same time, sang three songs in three different languages. And she was heathen. I guess we all were, but she was real heathen. She didn't go to church at all. But I knew in my heart that I would go preach in the Orient. I knew it. I, I would even pray out in the Oriental tongue a lot of times then. And I went several years and nothing happened. W was going to go to Mexico as a missionary. That didn't work out. Ended up coming to Greensboro. Mark Brzee came here and started preaching here. Then Mark Brzee asked me to go preach over in Europe in the Bible schools over there. And we started going. We went, to, we went to Estonia and Sweden and England and the... Czech Republic and to Italy and to um, France and to Spain, uh, all these different places preaching in the Bible schools. And after several years of this, I was, uh, we went to the mailbox one day and pulled out the mail and Mark had his newsletter in there. And uh, in there, Mark's, you know, sharing about how he was flying home from Europe. He's looking out the window and, and the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, what you've done in Europe will work in Asia. And immediately I knew. I'm going to Asia to preach. Now, God told me at this point, this, this has been, at this point, it had been 79. Uh, this is 96. And in 1997, 20 years after God put it in my heart, I stepped off an airplane in Bangkok, Thailand to preach the gospel in, in Asia. It's the only time I've been. But God told me in, 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 uh, in uh, 79, it was 99, it was 99. It was 20 years later. It was 20, it was 1999. 20 years after God told me I would go, I went. It had been so long, I had put it on the back shelf. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until I picked up the newsletter and said, what you can do in Europe is going to work in Asia, that God went, bam, there it is. You're going. I told you in 79, and it's 99. You see, God knows the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. He knows, he, he does not stand in the seat of time. He sits outside of time. And what he sees in 79 and 99 are so close together, we can't even tell, he can't even tell the difference as far as it being 20 years. We do. He sits outside of that time. What God has called us to in Greensboro, I've had minister friends tell me, if people had done to me what they've done to you, I would have packed that and left a long time ago. But I don't answer to men. And I can't let what men or women have or have not done to me or for me and help us or have not helped us do what God called us to do affect the fact that I must obey God. 
God sent Janie and I here. And Jessica. Jessie was, she was with us at that point. And into everything. Yeah, shocker. But God sent us to Greensboro. God sent, and then he expanded. He said, go to Winston. We went to Winston last year. We're, uh, we're, we're sent to the Piedmont Triad. I know there's churches. I know there's big churches. I know there's churches preaching good. There's churches preaching flaky. But that's irrelevant to us. We're called. We have a call. We have a place. We have wisdom, we have counsel, we have understanding, we have the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and we have a purpose. So here's, here, here's on one side of this, I'm asking you stay with us during the transition. You'll want to stay after the transition. I'm talking about during the transition. You know, um, if we come to you and say, look, guys, we haven't found anything, but next Sunday there's going to be a... Um, over, uh, over there in the shopping center by the school over there, we're going to have a pastor van. We're going to pick up anybody who, who doesn't want to drive themselves and drive you to Winston. We need for you to be there. I say, I'll do it. Amen? Yeah. Look, Sandy's ready to knock walls, out, walk, knock walls out and make it bigger over there so we can seat more people over there that, where we're meeting so we can handle it because they want to make sure we, we keep the church. We've got to keep the church alive and going. Amen? Because we have a purpose. So, we're, so right now, Take your finger and point it at yourself. Say, I am the launch team. Because we're, we're going forward. We're going to launch into this city with new zeal and new fervor. Amen. In a different location. I believe a better location. Even, if it's, even the temporary one's going to be better. Because we're getting out of the, off the, we're just kind of cut off over here. We are. You got to come into this business park, and you go down the road. You got two churches that are standalone, that are Raymond churches, and it's kind of like some people. I, I go over there sometime to meetings, and Pastor Ed, we love you. We love your ministry. We're supposed to be over here. Did God not call anybody to our church? I, I mean, sometimes I want to ask him. You mean really? You mean God didn't call anybody to our church? You love us, love our ministry, but you're supposed to be over here because well, it's got it's got all the stuff. For their kids. I get it. You know, it's got all the kids stuff. Well, we have kids stuff. We love our kids. Amen? Yeah. And I just rather come up and just say, hey, good to see you. Still telling me, you know, you're great. We love you. We love your church. But we're supposed to be. I get tired of hearing that. Just, just shut up. Don't tell me anything. Just say we love you. Just don't come over and tell me how you, you came and visited and you loved it and it was awesome. It was great. You, great word, great flow of the Holy Ghost, but we're supposed to be over here. I don't want to hear it. Just go over there if you're supposed to be over there and shut up. Don't even tell me you love me. Just say, hey. Let us go on and do what God has for us. You know, you get tired of going there and getting... So we're going to go do what God has for us to do. Somewhere else. All right? Somewhere else. We're in transit. We're in transition. Say it. We're in transition. Say this. Transition is not a bad thing. Because to go where you're supposed to go, you got to go through transition. Guess where Abraham would have never got to had he not obeyed God? A land called Israel. He'd still be in Ur of the Chaldees had he disobeyed God. He had not become a nomad, left the comforts of home, left all the... You know, he, he disobeyed by bringing a lot, but um, if he had not left all that stuff behind and gone out as, as in a migratory nomad mode. Now, that's, let me say, that's like taking your house and selling it and getting you a travel trailer with a truck and not know where you're going with it. And God saying... Take off driving, I'll show you where you're going. Now some folks go, well, that'd be fun. Until your wife says, where are we spending the night? I don't know, baby. Where's God taking us? I don't know, baby. But he went out in faith. We're going out in faith. Y'all going to go out in faith with us? Stand with us? Amen. Pray with us for direction. Help us move this week. 
I, I took one of my, I took one piece of person on there really well and said, I'm going to put you in charge of moving. They said, no. <laughs> they don't want to move. They don't like moving. I don't blame them. I, I, I tried to fire me three times the past few days. Yeah, so you're fired. Uh, you get back up there. You're re- rehired. <laughs> so, we are taking tomorrow off. We need rest. I mean, we've, we need rest. And Janie's last day, Janie goes back to work on Tuesday, so we're taking the last day of the, of the whole Christmas time off and spending some family time because after that, it's busy. Okay? Don't get worried and don't scatter. God has a plan. Amen. We're going to walk. We, we are going to walk in that plan. And by the 17th, we'll be meeting somewhere. Okay? We will have church here Wednesday night. We will have church here next Sunday and Sunday night. After that, we may, we may get up next Sunday morning and tell you, we, we know exactly where we're meeting. Okay? Pray for us. Follow us. Help us. Let's go, let's go to a new place. Let's go do something different, something exciting. Amen? Let, let's do something for Jesus that we've not done before. Amen. People do mobile churches all the time. They do. They, they, they rent trucks. They, they, they get trailers. They fix them up. They put all their equipment in there. They roll up the place. They roll everything in. They go set up. They come out. They have church. They come out and roll it all back in the trailer and take it back off until the, the next Sunday. It goes on all the time all over the country. We've had a building, but our building is no longer ours. We're moving. So we're going to become a mobile church for now. Can y'all handle that? Can y'all work with us on that? And please don't, 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 don't stop. People quit and take the finances. You know, we, we, we can't afford that. We need to be able to go and do what God called us to do. Amen. We, we need your support during this time. It's like we've never, I need you to be uh, Aaron and Ur and hold my hands up through this process. And stand with us and undergird us. And we don't, we don't, need, the, we don't need added pressure of financial drop off because people stop coming. You know, I mean, we got enough believing God and doing to get through the transition without having to add to, well, so and so left and so and so left, and that's, three, that's another $1,500 a month we don't have coming in. That we, don't, we don't need that kind of stuff. We need you to stay with us. Amen? And we'll be just as much a church on the 17th as we are on the 3rd. We are Faith and Victory Church. Amen? You love us? You with us? Going to support us? Stay with us? We'll see it through. Why hadn't he showed you anything yet? He didn't show Abraham. Didn't I just read that to you? He said, get out of your place, and I'll take you to a place that I will show you. While he was moving, we're like the military. Set out to sea when we're going to get our orders. When you get to sea. Amen. They get out to sea, then they get the orders sent in. I remember um, uh, uh, John in harm's way. Old black, one of the last black, probably one of the last black and white war movies made, 64. John Wayne's, you know, he's a sea ca- he's a he's an able captain, and um, Kirk Douglas is there, and they've got a ship coming into Tulabon, out in the Pacific, and um, he goes to the ship to meet somebody for John Wayne to tell him something, and they said, well, we're got some, we're time we're ready for some R and R. He said, don't you know you're setting sail for such and such, right? You ain't you ain't getting off the ship because the orders come after they're out to sea. God God's leading us by faith. We're going to set sail. And then we're going to get our orders. I see this. So don't, don't be mad with the owner. I'm not mad with the owner. I know he doesn't like me, but that's, you know, those, those are things that, okay, so what? So what? God has another place for us. And that's what we're majoring on. He will show us. Well, why didn't he show you in advance? Because then you're walking by sight and not by faith. He's making us walk by faith through this. I went and ran the storage units yesterday. We, we could only use those storage units one month. 
We could be moving back, back out of there in the January. And you know what? Because it was a move-in special, we got them for $16 a month, two of them. $32 is what it cost us to get storage units for the rest of this month to put all the stuff in. And that goes up next month, but it's still not horrible. It's about what the utilities will cost us here, or actually less than the utilities. And we, we, we don't have a permanent place of our own where we don't have any utilities to pay. We rent a, if we rent a, a theater, we rent a... Uh, Community center, whatever, we just pay the, the use of the room. We don't pay the utilities and the gas and all that stuff. We're going to get the phone number put somewhere so we can keep it. We're going to have the phone number move somewhere that we can get, you know, Time Warner just to put that number somewhere so we can keep that number. We don't want to lose our phone number. But other than that, you know, we're not going to have to pay Duke Power, or Piedmont Natural Gas. All that stuff's not going to have to be paid. That's money we save. Lease will be reduced. That's you know, we don't know how much it could cost for three, four hundred dollars a week to meet somewhere. We don't know. The bottom line is, we need your support. We need you to stay with us because this is God. God's moving us. Just say God's moving us. God is moving us. We are not shutting the church in Greensboro down and moving to Winston. I know that was a rumor last year in February. We were shutting down and moving to Win moving to Winston. That's just not true. That's never been true. That's never been my heart. I want to move Western to Greensboro. So we reach more the center of the Piedmont. But I don't want, I'm not moving this, this church, the main campus, to Winston-Salem. That's not what we're doing. Never been our plan from, at all. Some people thought it was and just told people it was. And this, I don't know where you got your information from, but I do. Devil on the hotline. Instead of Jesus on the main line, it was the devil on the hotline. Yeah, they're, they're going to shut down and move the went. No, we're not. Hello. I found a place in Jamestown. We're like, well, that's Jamestown. It's not Greensboro. So we're, we're kind of debating some things. I mean, yes, Jamestown could be part of the suburb of Greensboro. But we're not moving to Winston. We are not moving this church to Winston. Okay? So if you, even if we go over there for three weeks and meet over there, we're not moving this to Winston. That's not what we're doing. And my, my intention is not to even do that. Because I don't want people who can't drive over there who don't want to drive or don't have the money to drive that extra far to, to be put in that position. We want to keep our foothold here. But, I mean, if we come up and we just haven't found anything, we'll do what we got to do for a shorter period of time as we can. All right? We'll come pick you up and take you. Or we'll get Larry to come do it. Larry has a CDLs, don't you? Or CBL, what is it? CDL. He's got a CDL. He can pick up a bunch of folks. We get a 25 passenger van. He could take them. Amen. Stand up. You love us. You for us. We're going to see it through. We're in a transition. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.